Now, how many times have we all been told that cutting down on drinking, smoking and eating more healthily is the secret to longevity? Well, a new report says if you're unlucky enough to be diagnosed with cancer, it could well be down to simple bad luck. A team in the United States has found two-thirds of cancers they analysed had more to do with chance than unhealthy lifestyles. But here's the rub. Medical experts stress that doesn't mean abandoning healthy choices. Well, our science editor, Tom Clark, is here. Tom, try and disentangle the science for me. Well, often when someone's diagnosed with cancer, they ask the question, why? What could I have done? What, what could have caused this? And I think more painfully, what could I have done, should I have done, to prevent this, perhaps? Well, this new analysis by a very eminent group in the US suggests perhaps, for a lot of kings, not very much at all. They conclude that only a third of, of common cancers that we find may be due to inherited factors or to lifestyle. That's things, as you said, like smoking, drinking too much, eating too many burgers. So perhaps not surprisingly, they found that lung cancer, for example, most of it is not due to chance alone. Smoking is still the biggest cause of that. Likewise, for colon cancer, one type has a strong link to red meat in the diet that we eat. A couple of other forms of common forms of colon cancer, there's a strong inherited component too. And for a common form of skin cancer, the most common form of skin cancer, in fact, is strongly linked to too much exposure to sunlight through our lifestyles. But for the rest of them, for two thirds of common cancers, they're saying that chance mutations as our cells divide could be the main factors. And that includes a lot of brain cancers, um, quite a few common bone cancers as well, and things like pancreatic cancer. And controversially, esophageal cancer, malignant melanoma, for example, which we thought had quite a big lifestyle component, they're saying it's actually mainly due to chance alone. But this doesn't mean, does it, that we can all start gorging on burgers and downing beers again, does it? Well, that's the point. We, we, we don't know, if only that were the case, um, we just don't know what cancer we might end up getting, if any. And because a healthy lifestyle will definitely reduce your risk of some very common and very deadly forms of cancer, that remains the watchword. And that was something that um, our biggest cancer charity were very keen to remind everybody of today. It's true that some cancers are just down to bad luck, but there are lots of things we can do by making healthier lifestyle choices to stack the odds in our favour and reduce the risk of developing cancer. We can start by not smoking, maintaining a healthy weight, a healthy diet and cutting back on alcohol. These are all some of the things you can do. Now, I should also mention at this point that the biggest cancers for men and women, that is prostate cancer and breast cancer respectively, weren't actually looked at in this analysis because the right kind of data weren't available. And some cancer specialists are sort of questioning the approach they took. This is a very mathematical, statistical approach. They looked at the rate at which stem cells in different tissues in the body, which give rise to cancer, the rate at which they divide, the ones that divide the quickest, are at the greatest risk of mutations occurring naturally. And they then compared that to the rates of cancer in the general population. And they admit themselves they don't include factors like could sunlight actually affect the rate at which cells mutate. There could be more to this than that simple mathematical analysis. But it does raise the very relevant point that a lot of cancers still are beyond our control. They are down to chance. So boiling it all down, how much use is this report then? Well, you could think that's a pretty good question. If it's just down to chance, well, what's the point in doing the analysis? Well, in actual fact, it could help focus quite limited resources we've got for cancer control. For example, um, if you know it's a lifestyle risk cancer like lung cancer or, or uh, colon cancer, sure, focus on those lifestyle messages. However, if they're due down more to chance, let's say pancreatic <coughs> cancer, perhaps the, mess the money would be better spent finding new ways of diagnosing those cancers early, seeing as there's nothing much we can do to prevent them happening. And briefly, I mean, how much chance is there of more testing and screening um, when, you know, this age of tighter resources in the NHS? Absolutely. So for some cancers, we could definitely do a lot better. Esophageal cancer, for example, a big killer. Pancreatic cancer, too. We could do a lot better at catching them early and diagnosing them. But for others, it's also very rare cancers. You could spend a lot of money on screening and testing, but only save very few lives. So it might not be resources very well spent. It's a bit of a dilemma for cancer specialists in the NHS.